We have been talking about previous heat exchanger networks or crash heating and we haven't paid attention that much into this so let's check it out. Now of course we know that there is a furnace which increases the temperature and sometimes we have pre-flashing otherwise we can directly add this to the column. What I haven't told you that much is about these HEN, HEN1 and HEN2. There are two main heat exchanger networks. One before the crude desalter, remember that increasing the temperature here will improve the desalting efficiency. And one before the uh, furnace. So here actually what we are doing is preparing or trying to increase the temperature before the furnace. Not that much to get an advantage on the furnace, but because we want to cool down all these materials, HGO and residual material. So we need to cool down these instead of we just cooling or spending money on cooling these products and spending more money in increasing the temperature from let's say this temperature to final temperature we are doing this exchange of networks remember that this is essentially just hot product plus the stream rate versus the crude oil so essentially is a product which is high in temperature those are nafta kerosene lgo heavy gas oil residue versus a low temperature material which is crude oil here the salted crude oil or crude oil before the furnace so what we're doing here is essentially just a heat exchange now this is a very important operation as you can imagine and this is a little bit more let's say more detail heat exchanger network as you can see here this is just hand and a box but right now we have several exchangers so what's happening here is essentially that we are going to be exchanging heat via change of temperature just one little note right here nafta is actually a partial condenser so you're going to be having some nafta as vapor and liquid but all others are without phase change okay so here it goes the crude and it's going to be treated here First, the jet fuel. Remember, this is around middle distillate. Then this is middle distillate. This is heavy distillate. Heavy to middle. Heavy. Heavy. Actually, this is very heavy. So this is very huge in temperature. So I would say this is about 250 tops. Then we desalt it. And the second heat exchanger, which will be here, will be something around maybe 290 something around that and then we get the crude oil to the furnace which makes the finisher let's say temperature fixed to 350 and then we get it to the distillation column the exchanger networks enable to increase the crude oil temperature to about 200 up to 230 depending on the operation of course and depending if you are using enough residue depending on the amount of residue you're getting actually if you have a high flow rates of residue then you will need to increase the flow rate and you will increase the temperature automatically now of course this is very important because we have our crude oil which is around 25 celsius and we're getting it up to 250 remember that the, our main goal is to achieve 350 celsius so we are helping the furnace to achieve a higher yield or let's say more efficient yield which is of course energy which we are saving ourselves instead of buying a condenser sorry a refrigeration system where or let's say instead of using water we're using the same crude oil for heat exchange okay they also cause more pollution due to the burning more okay this pretty straightforward if you don't use this heat exchange network you're going to spend money and of course you're going to increase thermal pollution of water and that's why we use heat exchanger networks and of course this is very important not only for the crude oil per se but for the final products or let's say the straight run products